This is the Porsche 911 GT2 RS. The most powerful 911 ever created. It has 620 horsepower routed through the rear wheels. Compared to a standard 911 Turbo, the GT2 RS is 323 pounds lighter, weighing in at just 3,177 pounds. But like all 911 since the beginning of time, for many drivers, it has had one major Achilles heel. Its engine is cantilevered off the rear end. In a world where weight balance is key, having a heavy lump of metal hanging off one end could be a recipe for disaster. So how has Porsche counteracted this inherent design anomaly and in doing so created one of the most capable supercars on the planet? Listen up. A basic strategy for taming a rear heavy car is to proportionately match the front and rear tire widths to the weight distribution. The GT2's engineers have come close. Its weight distribution is 38% up front and 62% at the rear, while its ratio of tire width is 43% front 57% rear. And given that the Porsche's stern is accommodating both a flat six engine and rear tires almost 13 inches wide, there isn't much extra room to spare. No wonder then that the GT2's rear suspension is a particularly sophisticated multi-link design. Despite clever engineering, with all the electronic driving aids turned off, the GT2 RS remains one of the trickiest cars on earth to tame. Besides an off-center weight balance, it pumps out a massive 620 horsepower to the rear wheels from a turbocharged flat six engine. Unleash the turbo when the car is in an unsettled corner and you could easily find yourself pointing in the wrong direction. If you actually know what you're doing, however, the GT2 RS is capable of a pace that few cars can match. So how does all this engineering actually work in a high-speed corner? To find out, we coned off a high-speed corner on one of the runways at the abandoned El Toro Air Base in Southern California and loaded the car with sensors to record every little bit of information we could. Viewed in normal speed, the GT2 RS appears to breeze through the high-speed sweeper without breaking a sweat. But slow down the action and the science of the Porsche's speed becomes apparent. Approaching the corner at 100 miles per hour, the GT2's rear weight bias actually makes it one of the best stopping cars in the world. Suddenly its static rear weight bias is dynamically redistributed forward. With a combination of those giant tires and front brakes that contain discs formerly used at the back of the mighty Carrera GT, the Porsche is generating almost 1.1 Gs of deceleration. Slowed to about 60 miles per hour, the GT2's turn-in speed is critical. The car's capability for speed makes it incredibly easy to charge in too fast and wind up understeering. But hit the speed target right and the tire's thin tread depth makes the nose wonderfully responsive. As the Porsche begins to attain a slip angle, maybe just two degrees, the fat rear tires are starting to generate lateral grip and resist that giant engine's desire to keep going in a straight line. A combination of a rough surface, a slightly fast early rotation rate, and an indelicate throttle foot has caused the tail to step out about five degrees. That's actually in a good grip range for the Michelin Pilot Sport Cup tires but not for the uncomfortable driver who flicks in a dose of counter-steer to halt it. And now, the trickiest moment of all, applying the engine's enormous power and torque. As with braking and turn-in, the key here is patience. The worst thing to do is to add power too soon. And critically, when it is applied, the steering angle must be simultaneously dialed out. Finally, we're left with a question. Is the GT2's rear engine actually the villain it's portrayed to be? In the hands of an experienced 911 racer, the car's peculiarity is sometimes described as an advantage, both ends of the car being manipulatable via the throttle and steering wheel. And notably, Formula One cars, considered the best handling car in the world, have an even greater rear weight bias than this Porsche. The crucial difference? The GT2, unlike a Formula One car, must sometimes do its work on bumpy roads, which can all too easily disrupt the grip of those big rear tires. However, given a smooth road, the GT2 RS is simply one of the fastest cornering cars in the world.